Question number 11. Write this 8 over 2x plus 5 minus 3 over 4x minus 3 as a single fraction. So it's two algebraic fractions that you must make one. Okay, again, let's go to the textbook. So we are going to, that's question 11. <clears throat> We are in the textbook, uh, this is part 1, you can see it's an expression, algebra, so it's page 115, and the example I'm going to look at is 32, it's algebraic manipulation, okay, there it is, so let's start there, okay, so basically, <clears throat> I'm going to, this is more or less this, okay, that one is actually just two brackets, but it's work on the same principle, now, you must just find first the LCM. Now the LCM, you cannot say this already a x. No, put a bracket. So it's that separate x plus, as well as the x minus 2. That is the LCM. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is not an equation. It's an expression. So I go and I multiply. I see what is there. Okay, that is there, but that's not. So I multiply that x on the bottom as well as on the top. There's the x, but that is not there. So I multiply the bottom and the top with that. Now, this, this is the reason why I like to use that also in equations. I make all the denominators the same, take it to the LCM. And if it's an equation, the only thing then, because I multiply with the LCM all the terms, all the denominators cancel out. But that's only if it's an equation. If there's an equals to something, but that, that's not there. It's an expression. Okay. So basically, I just keep the denominator in this case. I keep it. There it is. And I get 3x and I get 4. And I just simplify the numerator. So I multiply, multiply, add the like terms. And that is my final answer. Now well, let's go back to the question paper. <clears throat> so let's just see how we are going to do it. I think it's here. There it is. So instead, there's now not just a, another bracket, but still, my LCM will be 2x plus 5, 4x minus 3. That's my LCM. So all, and I'm going to rewrite it, so I'm going to say 8 over bracket 2x plus 5 minus, I'm just writing it a little bit out so that I can fill in things. So basically, I'm just going to say, okay, the 2x plus 5 is there, but there is still not the 4x minus 3. So I'm still going to multiply 4x minus 3. The 4x minus 3 is there, but not the 2x plus 5. So I multiply it with the 2x plus 5. And it's not an equation. So I keep the denominator. I keep my long line. And I write my two brackets because now it's the same. So it's going to be, let's just get the pen correct, 2x plus 5, 4x minus 3. And it's going to be 8. Now, I, I, as I said, especially in the videos, I don't like to leave out steps. You can, just be careful. Do you see the negative? Oh, always be careful for negatives. Okay. So there's the 3 and there's the 2x plus 5. <clears throat> so just to help you to follow. So if I multiply, then it's 32x minus the 24. And you can multiply it in. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And that is going to be over... And let's just get the pen correct. 2x plus 5, 4x minus 3. Okay. And now I'm just going to simplify. I'm just going to look for my like. Do you see like? Like. And I see like. Like. And I just simplify that. So 32 minus 6. What is that going to be? That's going to be 26. Okay. So again, don't. You keep your uh, denominator, your LCM. It's an expression. 
So I just simplify the top and I get 26x. And I simplify there and I get negative 39. Okay, and that will be your answer. And where will they give you marks? I think if you already have that and you multiply the correct brackets, and then basically, <clears throat> if you just uh, simply if you multiply the brackets out and then getting the final answer, that was not so difficult. Let's go to the next one. Now I see it's an inequality. It's a linear inequality. Okay, again, I want to take you to the textbook. <clears throat> so if you look. Uh, this is question number 12. Let's just find it. And this is example 45 I want to show you. Okay. It's basically, although this one in the textbook is more difficult, it's on page 164. It's example 45. But I think it's the, the, the method is exactly the same. So it's almost where you see that there's a middle part and then you see the inequality. So remember, you are reading it from the middle. So you say this is bigger and equal than negative 2 and smaller than 3. So you break it up basically in two parts. But don't forget to put your word and in between because it's a combination. So basically, I just it's almost like I write that part. Do you see? There it is. Exactly as it stands there. And then I do this, I write that part. Do you see that? And then basically I just simplify it. So then this is fractions. No, I just remember with inequalities, as soon as I divide by a negative, the sign swap around, but I don't divide by a negative. And then as soon as I'm finished, don't stop there, unless you put the word and in between. But you can put it on the number line. But as I said, you always read from the variable. So make a number line, make negative 3. So read it from to that side. X is bigger and equal. The bigger is to that side. X is, okay, remember, open if it's not included. Color in if it's included. X is smaller than 5. So you see there, and it's, it's there, and it's there. And basically, it's then that part. So then you can, you can put the X, you put the X in the middle, and you put this negative 3 there, you put the 5 there, and you put just the bigger and equal and the smaller there. Okay, and that's how you do it. So let's just go back to the question paper. <clears throat> so let's see the question paper. I think it's this one. There it is. So this one was easier because there's not so, but let me keep the same principle there. Do you see? I was taking that. And then I do exactly the same to the other side, and I, and I form two. Okay, so I, I'm going to work with the colors now, just to help you a little bit. So it's going to be negative 14. Keep the sign as it is there. 3p minus 2. And then it's going to be 3p minus 2 is smaller than 10. Okay, now I simplify this one. So negative 14, keep, keep the variable there. But bring the 2 over, it becomes positive. Now, as soon as you divide not by a negative, the sign stays the same. So this is going to be negative 12. Then I divide 3, I divide 3, and I get P is bigger and equal to negative 4. And, okay, don't forget, and, I forgot the and. <clears throat> and, so let's do this one. Then it's 3p smaller and it's 10 plus 2. So 3p is 12. I divide 3, I divide 3. So p is smaller than 4. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you on the number line here. Let's just, let's just get our number line before we write the final in. Okay. Now let's just mark on according to that number line we're going to mark. So, so let's say negative 4 is there. It's on this side. And oh, this one, oh, it seems to me the pen didn't work. Four, uh, 12 divided by 3 was 4. Let me just get to that one. It's not so clear. Okay. So, and then 4, 4 is here. It's on this side, 4. Okay. And now I read. Remember what I said, you read it to this side. So P is bigger and equal. So bigger and equal, it means to this. And P is smaller, so it's open to this, and it's connecting, that's why it's AND. So if you put it as 1, 
then you put the X there. Then it's always what I say, the mouths must look at the same, they are facing to this, this direction. But this one is having an equal, and this is negative 4. So the smaller one is on this side, and then the bigger one is on this side. So this is the bigger and this, and there you put it as 1. Otherwise, you must not forget to write the word and, otherwise you will be penalized. So I think for your statement, or coming to your final statement, and then um, just I just want to control, this is M2 for... If, if you came to that, where you came to the 12s, to this statements, and then putting it as one. Okay, let's look at this last question on this paper. <clears throat> paper. The ages of five children in a family are, okay, this is actually very nice, very basic statistics. Uh, find the mode, the median. Can I just want, as I said, my, my idea was with the ordinary level mathematics textbooks, is to include everything, even the grade 8 and 9 work. Because that is what sometimes missing. You don't have the textbooks anymore, and you cannot re um, revise that. So let's go to 13, um, page uh, number 13. There it is. <clears throat> very basic, very basic statistics. Okay, so just re remember, here I showed you, the mean is, series is obtained by adding the numbers and divide the result by the number of numbers. The medium, the medium is series numbers obtained by arranging the numbers in ascending order and then choose the number in the middle. The mode of the series number is simply the number which occur most often, the one with the highest frequency. If there's no one that's repeating, you can say it's having no mode. Okay. And then very, very simple, I just showed you here. So basically, I just add up everything here, and I just divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I get the medium. Uh, I just uh, I want to see, I arrange it, and then I look for the middle. And if you look the middle, you can say 1, okay, well, let's say 3 on that side, 3. So that 2 will be in the middle. If there's only 1, you take the 1. If there's 2, you divide it by 2. The most, what is the most popular one, and the one that's repeating, is 0 0.8 the one in the mode in order okay before i because they ask range also i just want to show you where i mentioned the word range in the textbook just to remind you before because then i can complete that question okay i just want to show you again this is um i, I hope i showed you the previous page the previous page was page 662 part 2 this page uh, is page 664 part 2 book okay now can I just show you here and I just want to bring it a little bit down make it a little bit smaller and basically all that I want to show you it's my me too small now is um, I'm asking you the range here you see there find the range and actually I just want to show you what what is the range so the range is the highest mark, there it is. The highest mark subtract the lowest mark. The highest highest value subtract the lowest value. Okay, I just showed you there. Let's go back to the question paper and we finish that question. It's in the next page. Okay, here it is. Okay. So basically, if we start here, it's very easy, very nice. Use the uh, number of lists to find the mode. Now, which one do you see? I see 17 is more than once. Do you see? So it will definitely be 70. The median, you must first arrange it. So what is your lowest? 5. Then, then after 5, it's 9. Okay, so scratch it if you arrange it. 9, and then 13, and then 17. 17 and now again the one in the middle and that will be 13 okay and then don't forget what i said is the range the highest minus the lowest so this will be your highest if you arrange it and your lowest will be this first one and the value will be 12 and as i said this was really score marks Question number 14. Find the number of sides of a regular polygon 
with an exterior angle of 24. So that's chapter 8. That's angles. Again, let's just go to the textbook. It's in part 1. This is question 14. I'll extract it for you there. And let me just go a bit bigger. <clears throat> it's this one. It's a regular polygons. Okay, so this, this example, it's on page 370. And this is in the um, part 1. The y equals mx plus c, grade 10, 11, mathematics textbook. Okay, now let's say. A nonagon is a polygon, so it's 9 with nine sides. Calculate the size of an interior angle of a regular. So the, just remember, I didn't ask it, but it's n minus 2 times 180. And that is then for the total. So if you want, just divide 9. But I'm looking at B. Now, as I said, B is more difficult than the one in the question paper. Each angle of another regular polygon is 150. If, if they just say angle, they mean interior. This is interior. Calculate the number of sides of the polygon. <clears throat> now, I, I made a picture for you. So this is the interior. But to find the exterior, I make a straight line. So that exterior angle is then 30. And then I must not forget that the sum of the exterior angles of all the figures, triangle, quadrilateral, is always 360. And I use that property. So I just go and I say 360 divide 30 and that is 12 sides okay so in this question was very easy in the question paper they already give you this 30 and you basically just divide it into 360. let's go back to the question paper <clears throat> there it was it's the next page okay and i just move it a little bit down so, <clears throat> if I'm going to do, find the number of sides of a regular with an, with an exterior angle. So, I just, just for the picture's sake, um, explanation's sake, I just want to show you that, okay, and I, I really wanted to use the ruler. And it's actually good, it was extended a little bit because it's a straight line. So, it's basically just saying to you that this is 24. But that's the exterior. So basically, I can just take the 360 and I divide it by 24 and I get 15. So it's having 15 sides. Very easy. And I think they will give you a mark for this and this. Easy stuff. Then we go to the next one. Find the size of the angles marked with letters in each of the following diagrams. Very basic angles. Again, I will take it to the textbook. So if you look at the textbook, and this is going to be 14b, I extract it for you there. <clears throat> and I make it a bit bigger. Okay, and it's just showing you the basic angles, and I could have, this was parallel lines, because this is also the example. And as I said, it's also work from the angle given, and work out all the angles, even if it's not asked for. Fill them in on the diagram. It's just to help you. So it's almost like, if you, and I, I, I can just say, oh, this is vertical opposite, so I know this is 53. And then I can say, oh, that is the letter F, do you see? So if that is 53, that one is 53. Then I can say, oh, this is a straight line, so it's 180 minus 53, and I will then, um, let's just see, 180, and that's 127. So actually, this was for me important, that, that if you look at that. And this is the same at this one. Start with the angle given and start working out. This is, this is vertical opposite, one, uh, three, six. Then you can say, oh, I can see that is my F. So in this case, this one will also be one, three, six. And this is what I showed you there. Okay, is one, three, six. Okay. And now I must just find my value of h but what i can do i can always do it like this let's just see oh i can see extend lines it is not a problem if you extend the line so if i make this line a little bit longer okay okay oh don't look straight anymore so let's rather just do it like this let it look straight then i can just say okay and especially with angles it's to say there's a lot of roads to rome <laughs> There's a lot of roads to Santiago also. Okay. I can tell you that. 
So there is the f. So if this is 1, 3, 6, then this is also going to be 1, 3, 6. And then the angle that I'm looking for is this angle. Do you see there? So basically, and this is why I said um, 360, it's a revolution, minus 136, and then it's that 224. Okay, and I don't know if there were still angles. Um, I, I got was 136, and J was also 136. So for me, this statement, which I showed you here, Work from the angle given and work out all the angles, even if it's not us. It's almost like you work it on your way to the correct one. It's uh, usually I set this example when I was in a classroom. It's like uh, it's like the um, the virus. So it's it infected the people close to it first, and then it starts going to this. So first work out the close angles and then spread it further. Okay. Uh, so let's just go back to that question. It's not a difficult again. Very basic. I think it's 8 and 9 basic. Okay. <clears throat> but it's parallel lines. And if it's parallel lines, I can remember a feel. I can, I can first, my F. Can you remember my F for fun? Okay. I just call it F. It's corresponding angles. Okay. So it's 1, 2, 8. So let's just go. So there is my F. So this one is 1, 2, 8. Okay. And then it's a straight line. Do you see? So it's 180 minus 1, 2, 8. Okay. And then I'm just going to get that one. And that is 52. So the value of A, let's just see what is the value of A. It's going to be 1, 2, 8. Let's just get my blue. And this one is 52. Very, very basic. And I think you will basically just if you came to the answer. Okay. And this is again very basic. This is now just a triangle. So let's just go and let's just find that triangle. Okay, that was question number the second one. Uh, 14, 14. Just want to check quickly that one. Uh, it was not, which is sorry. Okay. Do you see? I just want to show the name. It was corresponding angle. So I used a lot. That's co interior and that's alternate. I just wanted to control that. If I, okay. And then just showed you that. And then if I come to the triangle, oh, very basic, very basic. Just please don't remember this. This is the properties and it's very good. Even if it's grade eight or nine, always just go for your properties. If it's an equilateral triangle, all the angles is 60. And if it's an isosceles triangle, like it's almost like your legs are the same and then your shoe size are the same. Six, six, five, five. So the base angles will be the same. And I think that is basically what I'm testing there. So let's just go back to the question paper. Not with the examiner she's testing, okay. So don't please, don't forget, see where's your legs. This lady is lying. Can you see? This man, stock man. Okay, there it is. So that is equal. Do you see? So if this is 54, then what will this one also be 54? So please see there is the shoes. So that one will be 54. And again, as I said, very, very straightforward. Question 15. Okay, it's continuing on the next page. So I'm just going to read to you what stands here. And just that you see the picture. So it's saying to you, the line y equals gx is drawn on the grid. They don't give you the equation. They just give it a name. And there is the line. Okay, very clear. Now we will go to the next page and see what's the question. Okay, so let's start with the first question. So, I'm just going to say, okay, this is now graphs. I will now take you back to graphs. So, the first question, say, find the gradient of the line. So before I go back to the graph, I'm going to take you to the textbook, and I'm going to take you to 15A, just the gradient. How do I find the gradient of a line? 
and I'm going to take you to page 237. Do you see? Page 237, number 12. Let's just look. Part 1 of the textbook. So in the following graphs, find the gradient and the equation of the straight line. But in this case, I will show you both, but they are asking just the gradient. Now, I need two things. I need two points on the line. So it doesn't matter. So take points that's easy. And I think if it, where it cuts the X and the Y axis is easy points. They were nice in the previous one. They helped you by putting the points there. I will now go and control, but I think it's like that. So just make sure that you write your X and your Y correctly. So this is X is zero and this Y is this. Then I always do this. I always, because I know it's so easy to make mistakes. So I will always go and I will say, this is point one, this is point two. So I will say, this is X one, Y one. If this is point two, X two, Y two. Because it, it's just easier if you substitute them. So if you put it in your, this is the equation, okay, for the gradient. Remember the y's is on top. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. You can either put the 2's in front or the 1. But as soon as you put the 2 on top there in front, the 2 must be at the bottom also in front. And then substitute in brackets due to the negative signs and then just simplify. Okay, and then what do I do? Okay, this one I know the y-intercept, so I can basically just put the gradient in and it cuts the y-axis at negative 2. And I did it also there. I just want to show you because I'm going to use that. Say, for example, uh, I didn't know where it cuts the y-axis. Now, usually you will know where it cuts the y-axis. But say, I'll just show you the other method. I think we're going to use it a little bit later on. So say, for example, it's y equals negative 2 over 3x. Plus C. I, I put the gradient in. You remember, this is the book's name, the series of mine. It's a straight line to success. So Y equals MX plus C. So you can put any point, X, Y. So in the place of Y, I put 0. In the place of X, I put negative 3 plus C. I just want to show you it's the same answer. So this is going, the freeze will be cancelling out because this is over 1. So it's going to be negative 2, okay, can you see there? I just want to see, and a negative times a negative is positive 2 plus C. And then I take the 2 over negative 2, and it's exactly what you got there. Okay, just remember, negative times negative is positive. I almost made a mistake there. Okay, let's go back. That's, that's our first question. It's going to help us there. So that was the graph. Can I just show you? The graph. Let's go first to the graph. Do you see that point and that point? So I think it's a good idea to, to use that two points. They are giving it to me. So let's just write this point down as it's here. Just read it down nicely. So if I'm going to write this point down, okay, so the x is negative 2 and the y is 3. Okay, and this point. I'm going to write this down. The x is 2 and the y is negative 3. Okay, do you have that? So let's call this point A. We call this point B. I'm going to use it. So let's go to the next page and start using it. Okay, find the gradient. That's, that's remember, what they are asking. It's, this is the equation of a straight line. They are asking that gradient. Okay, but to get that gradient, okay, I need two points. And I'm going to write the two points which I wrote down now for you. It was negative 2 and 3. But you can take any two points on that line. So can I just go back and show you? You could have taken you could have taken the point zero zero. You could have taken just make sure it goes through, but the point zero zero was going through. So any two points that's going exactly through, through integers, you can take. Okay, but let's take that two points. I think they, they wanted to help you. So then the equation, okay, and then if this is point, you can call it A, but I, call, I prefer, this is point 1, so make it x1, y1. Point 2, x2, y2. And then I'm going to have um, m, 
is y2, my, remember the y's is on top, okay, x2 minus x1. There's negative signs, so be careful. So y2, it's, I prefer putting everything in brackets. Then y1, I put it in a bracket, okay. And then x2, it's 2. And x1 is negative 2. Okay, then I cannot make sign mistakes. And that is going to be negative 6, do you see? This is 2 plus 2, that becomes a positive, so it's negative 6 over 4. And if you simplify that, m is negative 3 over 2. You can press on your calculator. You can press, most of the calculators is having that A, B, C, that A, B, C key. So if you want to and you struggle to simplify, just press negative 6, A, B, C, 4, and your calculator will say negative 1 and a half, which is all right, or shift A, B, negative 3 over 2. So both is correct. So if somebody said uh, 1.5 is also correct, or if he say one negative, but just a negative, or negative one and a half, they are all correct. Okay, so one for that, and then one by working it out there. Okay, let's go on, let's go on. We are building on this graph. The table of values of another function is given. That's a quadratic. Can you see? Parable, parable. Complete the table. Now, you see that you don't have space, and I prefer that you rather just write it a little bit. Now, you can go to that extra page and use it and just mark it. Or, what, I, I, what I'm going to do, because it's just space, it's almost like an extra page here. So, I'm going to do it like this. Now, look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say, this is 15B, like a star. It doesn't matter, they're not going to give for calculations here. So I'm just going to do, I prefer, I write that equation because it's so easy to make unnecessary mistakes. But if you're good, you can do it just with the calculator. Okay. I write it three times because there's three open spaces. Okay. And then for the first open space, I substitute negative one. Negative one. Okay, and I finish this one. So I get 1 plus 2 minus 3. And what is that going to be? 0. And I fill it in, 0. Okay, so I scratch a little bit there. I don't like that. So 0. Okay, then I do the same here. And now I substitute 2. So I say 2 squared minus 2, 2 minus 3. And that's 4 minus 4 minus 3. That cancel out, so it's negative 3. And I write negative 3. And then it's 4, so it's going to be 4 squared minus 2, 4 minus 3. And that is going to be 16 minus 8 minus 3. And that's going to be 5. And I... Make sure it's free marks so that I don't make mistakes. Because if I make mistakes, my graph is also going to be a problem. Okay. Now they say, on the same grid, plot and draw the graphs. It's very, very important that all these points, one, two, three, remember the coordinates is going to be negative two and five, negative one and zero, zero and negative three, one and negative four. 2 and negative 3, 3 and 0, and 4 and 5. You must plot all of them, okay, to get full marks, and your shape must be correct. So, let's go and let's plot that. So, we're going to the previous page. Okay, now luckily I have my table of numbers here, so just follow with me. I'm just going to use red. And what I'm going to do, just to make it a bit clean, I just want to get that that you don't get confused. Okay, so negative two and five. So it's negative two and five. Oh, my graph is a bit not so. Your graph will be better. Okay, let's see. Okay, so it's negative two, negative two and five. 
Okay, make sure 100% correct. Then negative 1 and 0. Uh, sorry, it's just my pen don't want to write where I want to write. Okay, I prefer a cross. Then it's 0 and negative 3. 0 and negative 3. Okay, and then it's 1 and negative 4. 1, there is 1 and negative 4. Make sure you plot correctly. Not like my sketches now. It must be on the dot. Okay. And then 2 and negative 3. Oh, it's coming up again. The same as that one. And then 3 and 0. Okay. And then 4 and 5. And it's coming up. 4 and 5. Okay. There is 4 and there is 5. Okay, I just want to see that line. Sorry, I'm just going to search for my ruler here. Just more than anything, just to help me with that line. Because I'm struggling a little bit to see that line. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's just see quickly. It's like my line. Just want to see. It's, okay, I must actually... Count it from here. Okay, where was the four line? Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is that line there. It's just there. Okay. That is a bad point. So it's going to be four. I really should have put the ruler here. Because my lines is making me very tired now. Okay. So, but but you you can you don't have to work on technology. You are on paper, so it's going to be better. Now, even if you plot the points, you'll not get all your marks. You must now draw. Now, as I said, oh, I'm going to struggle a little bit more, but I'm going to try my best uh, to see that I don't don't get. Uh, okay. Just want to see. Uh, that point there. Okay. It's a bit more difficult for me with my technology. I just know that it must intersect there. I just want to see now. Doesn't happen. I will rather just explain to you. Just try my best. I cannot shift my paper a little bit like you can. I can, but I cannot draw and shift. Where you can do both. Okay, it's not, it's according to me, not the best so far. Okay, I will tell you at the end. So it, it must be looking like a parable, really, okay. So try your best, you're working with a pencil, you can really try. I, I, I must say, my curve, wow, I don't think it's really going to succeed in the exams. Okay, so please, um, I can just show you, or maybe I can do it better, but just make sure that it's round there. Okay, I think it's better if I just show you like this. Okay, but then let's go back to the question. And now it can influence my answer. So on the same, plot and draw the graph. Okay, so if you plot all the points, if you plot all seven points correct, you get three marks. If you pl plot five or six correct, two marks, three to four, one mark. And a smooth curve, which I think I would have lost that mark, um, you will get the, the next mark. So that makes four. So run on the coordinates of the turning point. No, that's fine. I can see that very clear because here is the turning point do you see do you see there okay, can I show you just there's the turning point okay so that is going to be one negative four so let's just go there and it's going to be one and negative four now determine graphically the solution to that means where y is zero now where y is zero let's just go back to my previous page where y is 0, oh, sorry, 
Thank you. I just want to show you something. There is, there is zero. So that is on the x-axis. So this one is still, it's where it's going to cut there, do you see? And there, and that's the x, x value. So x is negative 1 and x is 3. Right, so that is fine. That's going to be negative 1 and 3. And now I think due to my poor graph, Oh, and still my pen is also poor. Come on, come on. Okay, they say where the two graphs are equal. Now, don't forget, can I just show you? I, I, I should have marked here. This graph, this graph, this was gx. And this is fx. That's the names. Okay, they like to call a straight line g and, and a curve f, but it's not the same. Okay, now where they are equal, now my problem was, that was not the problem. I think this one was fine. There, do you see they intersect there? Or oh, let me take yellow. So it's like I go up and I read down. So definitely where X is 2. I think my problem will be about this one point. It should have been, if it was correct, according to them, it should have been negative 1.5. And now it's a bit 1. It was in the middle there. Okay, so can you see why I say my graph was not good? Because if my graph was correct, okay, where can I show you? I just want to have a rubber. If my graph was correct there, it should have cut at negative 1.5. I think negative 1 point. It should have cut that one there. So it should have came like this. Oh, then it looks even better. Do you see? Okay, but that was that was negative 1.5. It was supposed to cut there. So what was my two values? It was negative 1.5 on the one side and 2 on the other side. Again, you have to have both correct to get that mark. But for this, nice. For every one, you will get a mark. So please go to chapter 6. I did it thoroughly graphs in, in the part 1 textbook. Practice it. It's a lot of marks. Look look at the marks. It's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's not even all. I think there is also on top 12. Do you see 14? It's, it's just a lot of marks. So I just want to see that's 5, 9, 10. Yes, 14 marks. It's really making a big difference in a question paper.